Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast. I am your host, Teddy Panos, coming to you from the Inside Lowell studios here in beautiful, historic downtown Lowell. And today, we're going to tell you a little bit about a really great summer music series that pops into the Mill City every summer for, oh God, I'm going to get, I don't want to butcher the details, so I'm going to let my guest tell you all about it. What I want to tell you all about is our sponsors who are helping make this podcast, all of our podcasts, and all of Inside Lowell possible. Our friends at Washington Savings Bank with branches in Lowell and Drake It. Washington Savings excels at knowing their customers and their community. If you're looking to switch banks, make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank and find out how you can earn $300 simply by opening a new account if you're a Lowell or Drake resident. Learn more online at WashingtonSavings.com. Washington Savings Bank, serving Greater Lowell for over 130 years. Also want to thank our friends whose logos you can see over my shoulder there are Hafners, It Kicks, They Kick. They've been cooling and heating homes for nearly 100 years. They've been washing and fueling up vehicles for that same period of time. They are a true community institution here in Lowell. Call 866-IT-KICKS to learn more. That's 866-IT-KICKS or visit Hafners.com. Last but certainly not least, our friends at uh, Reverie 73. Uh, Cannabis industry still relatively new here in the Bay State and in Lowell. A lot of folks ask a bunch of questions. And all I can tell you, folks, is you have to get to Reverie 73. You'll know the difference. If you've shopped at other shops, other dispensaries, you'll recognize the difference immediately. Their store is bright. It's beautiful. It's clean. The staff is knowledgeable. It's friendly. They will go the extra mile to elevate your cannabis experience. Visit Reverie 73 at 1148 Bridge Street in Lowell or you can order online at reverie73.com. Thank you to those partners of Inside Lowell. Thank you to everybody who's made Inside Lowell possible. And with that, I turn my attention and bring in our guest this morning, a familiar voice, a familiar face in the Lowell area forever, because he's been in, in many ways synonymous with the Lowell National Historic Park and the summer music series at Boarding House Park, which is now just a week away from kicking off the 2023 season. Peter Osella, welcome to Inside Lowell. Uh, thanks for having me, Teddy. I'm glad to have the opportunity to bring people up to date on the Lowell Summer Music Series. Uh, and you were, you were wondering just how long has it been? How many years now? And uh, this is the 33rd season. Mm-hmm. Of course, we didn't count 2020 because uh, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that The year that wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, the... Uh, in 1988, uh, I was uh, running the, uh, a, a federal agency called the Lowell Historic Preservation Commission, which was building facilities for the National Park Service. And uh, one of our assignments was to build um, a Boarding House Park. And uh, for those who may not remember, that was a parking lot. Uh, and uh, the old h h paper store was in the Boarding House, which was restored to its uh, historic character, and then uh, um, there was a, a vision for a outdoor performing arts amphitheater. Uh, it actually uh, was envisioned to do theater, and um, so I couldn't quite figure that out because there's you know no wings, no mm-hmm. fly space, no you know all the things that theaters look for, and um, uh, not to mention ambient noise and and whatnot. And uh, we we were told we we actually commissioned uh, if you remember Dan Shea who was the uh, artistic director at Merrimack Repertory Theater back in the 80s, uh, to look at what could be done there. And he said, well, a very limited number of plays could be done there, and you'd have to do one play all summer long to, to handle the, uh, you know, the, the uh, royalties, the expense of, of mounting it, the rehearsing of the uh, uh, actors. Uh, if they're going to use body mics, they need, you know, they need to rehearse that. So anyway, to make a long story short, we said, this is not good. Uh, and um, really, it suits uh, music much more appropriately. And I think that's why, you know, you go down there on a summer's night to see a show and you just say, yes, this is this is what should be happening here. It's a beautiful spot. It's like an oasis in downtown Lowell. So, again, in 1988, it was a parking lot. Uh, 
So when you see those trees and you can't even put your arms around the trees, they're so huge. I was there when they planted them. That's how old I am. So anyway, <laughs> you you know the history, and it's uh, it, it's interesting because I knew you kind of came out around the same time as the folk festival came to Lowell. Mm -hmm. So you basically trailed it by a couple of years, right? Right. right. The folk festival, um, the first few years of the folk festival, there was no boarding house park. So, uh, uh, but again, once. Once there was a boarding house park, it sure. became really the prime venue for the folk festival. Yeah, so. and, and it quickly becomes apparent because you mentioned the location. It's it's as if the buildings were built there in the 1800s <laughs> to create special acoustics for yeah. an outdoor concert venue. Uh, I, you have to see it and experience it at least yep. once if you haven't already yep. to understand but you know you get some of these some of these voices and you get some of these performers you've had through the yep. years with the really special voices yep. and the the ambiance the acoustics of those buildings and the mm -hmm. sound bouncing off them mm -hmm. it, it really is magical to the point where performers have actually talked about it oh, themselves yeah. the the um the sound quality is superb and uh, so if it, it's more like you can go there, whether you're seeing an acoustic performer or I, I remember sitting there with uh, Eric Burden and the Animals playing. I said, this is like the best CD I've ever heard in my life. Uh, it was that crystal clear, not harsh. Uh, and that's because we have line array speakers, which reach the back equally with the front and equally with spots in between. So you get speakers geared to each part of the park. Uh, so the sound... Uh, spreads just just perfectly. So uh, um, uh, back in the uh, back in the early days of the fest of the series, uh, we'd have a, occasionally a band would come into town. They'd bring their own sound guy, and the person would be putting the moving the sliders and all that sort of stuff uh, on the on the control board. And uh, we'd get harsh sound. We'd get problems and whatnot. That doesn't happen anymore because it's all digital. And if you can't if you can't do it, you can't do it. You can't even operate <laughs> the equipment. So the people who are coming now, usually with the bands to do their sound, are uh, you know, they know what their settings are, they're ready to do it. And uh, uh, really we get some absolutely amazing, amazing sound there. It's it's if you want to see music, it's the place to go. How has the series changed and grown through yeah. the years you, you it basically give or take depending on how many mm -hmm. acts you're successful in mm -hmm. in landing 16 to 18 shows a yeah. year is kind of where you are is it, yeah. was it always that many shows uh, i don't remember it being uh, that many. we've had as many as 24 in the well, summer wow uh but in 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 fact we found our staff being worn out and our uh, our cell, uh, we found ourselves competing with ourselves uh, <laughs> because you get a certain array of genres that are available to us uh, and then um, you know there's just too many too many shows and uh, too much overhead from sure. staffing them and uh, doing all the things you have to do we're just paying the insurance bill for the summer <laughs> many 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 thousands of dollars so uh, there's a lot of expense to putting this on, uh, and thankfully we have a lot of partners and uh, a lot of sponsors that uh, enable us to do that. Yeah, you certainly do. So let's look at the uh, 2023 season, uh, mm -hmm. doing a quick scan here of your uh, flyer brochure, which you'll mm -hmm. find everywhere in downtown Lowell and throughout the National Park. Uh, looks like about 17 shows in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. affiliated, not all of them. Right. Concerts, you've got an anchor dance troupe performance. Right. The Folk Festival is in there. That's yep. three days of magic to boot. But uh, how, did, how do you put together the lineup like how to please describe that process because it, well it's not all easy and it no. rarely ends no. as you envisioned it exactly. at the beginning right exactly i i could have told you exactly who were my priorities and who we were going to nail down right up at the front of the season I'll, I'll tell you acts like uh trombone shorty and uh uh, Ziggy Marley, and uh, mm -hmm. th there are a number of different acts that we specifically targeted and pretty quickly found out that, uh, uh, first of all, that whatever we used to pay them, they're all demanding more these years. Sure. Uh, the cost of touring has gone way up. Uh, and uh, uh, the demand for these acts, and we're in the greater Boston market where we now have more venues than sure. ever. When you add in on top of all the venues we've had from years, you add in the 3,500 capacity Roadrunner in Alston and the uh, 5,000 capacity MGM Fenway 
you know, and that's just on top of yeah. House of Blues, Orpheum, you know, and just so many other venues. So uh, we're competing with those venues uh, for, to book these shows. You're competing, but you're in a category of your own because how many of these venues can you bring a, your own lawn chair? And oh, sit down. How many right. can you bring a blanket and and sit down on that under a starry mm. sky <laughs> with well, trees offering shade till the sun goes away? I think we certainly have a following who appreciates the ambiance of the experience and what can be done there and how it all works and how well organized it is, how safe it feels, how how comfortable it feels, all like that. On the other hand, the agents really just don't care they would like to know money who is putting the biggest pile of money on the barrel head and uh that makes all the difference yeah. in the world and of course um we we are uh, not allowed uh by the national park service to have alcohol in the at the events and and again it gives it a nice family feel it's, mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of bars and restaurants all around the downtown so uh they they don't mind that we <laughs> that we're not doing it uh, but um, but you do offer food though on the site. You have some, a food vendor yeah, and there's yeah. some uh, sandwiches, refreshing things. Yeah, and whatnot. Some, yeah. We, we, we're very since COVID, we've been very limited in our menu. But uh, um, at, at least there are some snacks and soft drinks and water and refreshments uh, there. Um, but the um, again, these other venues. If you stuff five thousand people into a hall, and uh, what are they doing? They're all buying buying alcohol one after another, you know, one drink after another. And, um, you know, what do you sell a night? 10,000, 15,000 drinks, you know? Uh, so it's um, the, the economics that they have and what they can offer some of these performers uh, is a bit of a challenge. Uh, but we've, uh, we've done okay. We've come out with, uh, I think, a really strong lineup this year. L let me just make a comment about sort of the whole COVID experience because we were building quite well uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, a lot of great acts. Um, and um, I I'm, I I'm sure uh, we had uh, during that period the Indigo Girls and the B-52s and uh, Bare Naked Ladies. And we had, you know, so we've had some really mm -hmm. great uh, national uh, acts. Um, then uh, COVID hit. And uh, we had already booked several of the shows, including Leonid and Friends. We were just laughing about a few minutes ago uh, that uh, they're finally here, mm -hmm. but they were supposed to be here in 2020. And um, um, the the um, so it took us a while. You know, COVID hit in March. We had already booked sure. a bunch of shows. We were still trying to book. The booking people were like. We're not sure what's happening. And so everything went frozen for a while. And then apparently it became pretty apparent that, you know, unless unless you, we have six foot, six feet between each person, that that wasn't going to happen. And that was not economically viable. So um, we assembled a 2021 season. It was a brief season, about 12 shows. Uh, and um, we uh, were challenged by the question of, well, what would that summer look like? What will large gatherings be allowed? And we were working with the governor's office and the state legislature. Uh, um, Senator Ed Kennedy was very helpful uh, connecting us with people uh, because we couldn't tell if we would be actually be allowed to do the shows, even if we rescheduled the 2020 right. shows into 2021. And in, uh, in retrospect, it was kind of a miracle you got to put any shows on. In it, it really it was. And it was very. We were very late getting answers, and uh, our first show was July 30th. That shows you how yeah. late in the game we were getting answers as to what was going to be allowed uh, during the summer. Um, so um, also in that the case of that, we did not book the most expensive acts because who knew. Who knew if we would be allowed to bring in the crowd that would that is needed to pay the bills uh, on, on that sort of thing? So we uh, we're a little more cautious and conservative with the bookings. So then you come around to 2022, and uh, there we are in the fall trying to guess what will summer 2023 sure. look like. And don't forget, in 2022, there were, we still had shows where well masking was required at all shows, and um, two of our last performers in September. Uh, required that um, 
COVID cards be checked, uh, vaccination cards. So um, that was even in as late as that. Uh, so now come 2023, we think, okay, we think we're in the clear. Uh, and, fingers uh, crossed, please. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and uh, so we went out with a very aggressive um, uh, set of offers. Even then you don't succeed with every offer. But uh, for example, getting people like Andy Grammer, who's a great national act, uh, uh, very upbeat, uh, very positive. Matt Nathanson, who is actually from Lexington uh, originally, uh, but uh, again, a guy with a whole bunch of hit records, uh, somebody that uh, is well known, and bringing back people like uh, Lyle Lovett and his large band, which will be his uh, the fifth time for the large band, the sixth time for Lyle Lovett. He did come with his acoustic group once, uh, and um, uh, Melissa Etheridge. Uh, for her, her third visit, uh, great rock and show, uh, na- you know, again, uh, a, a classic performer. So we've got this array of people who are coming throughout the summer uh, that we're thrilled to get, and we're spending top dollar. By the way, just to give you a little statistic, uh, to just to pay for the talent is $430,000. That's your performance budget. That's that is the actual amount being spent. No, not any of the technical components. No, 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 no. Or whatever. You... Oh, and if they sell enough tickets, they get bonuses. <laughs> That's extra. Uh, uh, my favorite is the bands that say, "This is our fee," but then you have to do this production buyout of thousands of dollars if you want us to bring our equipment. And it's like, hmm, what's that like without the equipment? <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, it's it's a, a challenging line of work. Uh, thankfully, uh, the response has been tremendous. So uh, we're selling like crazy, and uh, uh, I think people are feeling good about being out there again. Yeah, it's an it's an amazing lineup, and it's got a little bit of something for whatever your mm-hmm. musical flavor is. Mm-hmm. But uh, before we focus on the two June shows, mm-hmm. uh, my eyes immediately honed in back to back there. Thursday, August third; Friday, August fourth. Lie Love It and his large band. Melissa Etheridge. I'm going to guess your two best-selling shows so uh, far. Actually, people the, don't want to wait too long. The number one seller is Andy Grammer. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Number well, that two. makes sense. He's, yeah. a, he's a big act. Yeah, and number two is Lyle Lovett. Okay. So, uh, and the others, you know, Matt Nathanson, Melissa Etheridge. Um, uh, I don't know. Did you, you know, mention yeah. Patty Griffin? Uh, Patty Griffin. Another was, big, uh, well-known name. Yes, yeah, and she was the last one we booked uh, to kind of fill out the calendar. Uh, so um, glad to have her, and she's, uh, you know, just a classic folk voice. The, the the other cool thing you do is you you bring in these groups that do tributes or will play specific albums in their entirety, note mm. for note, as they were mm. written, as they were recorded. So you've got yeah, this year classic albums live August eighteenth, Credence Clearwater Revival. You've got a Led Zeppelin uh, mm. tribute thing, and of course Leonid and Friends, who we're going to talk about in a little mm. bit more mm. specifically yep. in a minute. That's the music of Chicago. Pe- yeah. People my age, that that's our sweet spot right there. Right, Chicago right. Zeppelin, Cre- yeah. Zeppelin, Credence Cre- Clearwater Revival. So it's kind of interesting because our our bias is national recording artists, and uh, our hesitancy is. Uh, tribute shows, whatnot. And uh, we've done some with uh, local area tribute bands, uh, and they don't do as well. But there are these national touring acts that do actually quite well. And uh, the classic uh, example is Classic Albums Live. Uh, We had them, um, now I may not get the the years right, but I'd say going back to like 2015 or so, uh, and we had a show, uh, Classic Albums Live, Abbey Road. So it was Beatles. And they came out and did Abbey Road beginning to end, spot on. Uh, the voices, the good, the music, just in the perfection. exact order that the exact tracks appear order. on the album, exactly. right? Exactly. Did you get the scratching noise in the background just for a little <laughs> authenticity? I, I don't recall. But anyway, <laughs> they uh, uh, then they came back for a second set of just Beatles hits, and they were just spectacular. So the next year we booked them to come back, and uh, they did Sgt. Pepper, and they had four horns, four strings in addition to the band, and. Um, just amazing stuff, all of Sgt. Pepper, and then a whole bunch of Beatles hits that required horns and strings. So uh, it was really great. Well, then we said, let's let's take a shot at something else. And we had Pink Floyd, 
Uh, we had Queen. Uh, we had the Eagles. And we had Fleetwood Mac. Every single one of them. And what they do is they they have a, config, a band configuration that changes. So if you need a couple of female voices, mm -hmm. sure. you know, they bring those in for the different shows. Uh, each one of those shows has been financially successful. The okay. audience turns out for them. And people just enjoy the ever-loving <laughs> crap out of them. Because you know every song. And you you, know I, I would everything. imagine singing right. along, right. and it's a ton I, of fun. I got to tell you, like last year was Fleetwood Mac. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with Fleetwood Mac. I mean, the, the music's got to be just so, uh, and the voices, you know, and if somebody, you know, if the Lindsey Buckingham is the lead or the Stevie Nicks is the lead or Christine McVie, you got to get those voices right. And when they're together, they got to be right. And, and the year before, the Eagles, you know, you can't do it wrong. You got to get it spot on. And they ha every time they leave people just shaking their heads that they can't believe how good these bands are. So uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, we've seen the, uh, the videos, and uh, we know they'll be spot on there. And, gee, how many hits do they have? Uh, dozens. So uh, um, it'll be that'll be great. Uh, and then um, we did... Um, sort of late in the game, stumble on this uh, Led Zeppelin II, which is a Chicago show. Um, I, I'm sorry, a band from the city of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, not Chicago, the band. <laughs> that's sorry, Lee, I, the yeah, Russian we'll get, guy. Yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> that's all I need to do is confuse the audience. Uh, but uh, Led Zeppelin II, and again, they send the video and whatnot, and, uh, and it's like, wow, spot on. So uh, there are other... Led Zeppelin tributes that have been playing the areas. By the way, if you look at venues like Hampton Casino and Indian Ranch out in Webster, they each have 10 or more tribute shows uh, on their lineup. Mm -hmm. And as much as they have major national touring acts, they have the tribute shows in there. Everybody is doing uh, very well with these, and uh, the audience is getting what they came for. You know, the, the, the authenticity. Certainly yeah. are. So, LowellSummerMusic.org is the web address. You can yes. see the full lineup. You can purchase your tickets. We'll reinforce that in a second. We're chatting with Peter Osella from mm -hmm. the Lowell Summer Music Series. Uh, we're recording this on, what's the date here on my TV? June 8th, 2023. Of course, uh, you may be watching it whenever. As we like to say here at Inside Lowell, we provide news, information, and sometimes entertainment on your <laughs> schedule, not ours. But uh, the first show of the Summer Music Series is Saturday. Saturday, June 17th. We're going to focus on that. Just quickly want to thank all of our sponsors, our newest sponsors, the Lowell Philharmonic Orchestra, Action King Services. We've got a couple of others who've reached out this week. We want to thank all of the sponsors who've been with us forever, and especially the two you see over my shoulder there, our friends at Hafner's, It Kicks, They Kick, and of course, Reverie 73 voted the number four cannabis shop in Massachusetts by Boston.com just a few weeks ago. And of course, our friends at Washington. Washington Savings Bank, who want to give you a 30% return on your money, $300, if you open an account and put $1,000 in it. Find out more, WashingtonSavings.com. All right, Leonid and Friends. We've, we've touched on them a couple of times. A, because they played music that I grew up and loved, mm -hmm. Chicago. B, because, as you said, they were one of the first casualties of the of the COVID season. But you stuck to it, brought them back. Right. Uh, we're, uh, we're glad to be a partner with the Summer Music yep. Series here at Inside Lowell, and we actually uh, put out a, a little Facebook message promoting their show. Well, Leonid or one of his friends <laughs> caught wind of it and uh, shared it out there. So that Facebook post has gone viral. But uh, what makes these guys? There's a, there's a lot of Chicago tribute bands out there. They, they don't build themselves as a tribute band, though, right? Um, um, they just build themselves as Leonid and yeah. friends. They're now known. What they did was... Um, uh, Le Leonid uh, Vorobiev, that's not that hard. Uh, anyway, uh, Leonid, who is the, he plays bass, he plays piano. He's actually a producer, a studio producer in Moscow. And um, he uh, assembled friends to do uh, some Chicago covers for a particular event that he was uh, interested in. And as a number of years ago, and uh, he, they recorded the videotape them and put them on their website. Well, as time went by, they had 30 
or more songs on their website where they were playing, playing spot-on covers of the Chicago albums. Now, they have never seen the group Chicago live because the group Chicago has never played Russia. And, and English is not their first language. Oh, no. So the fact that they can pull this off no. the way they do is quite yeah, amazing. Exactly. Right? Uh, so, um, uh, and they haven't been around the U.S. like hanging out to go go to shows. Uh, so uh, when they're here, uh, by the I mean, I was just looking at their calendar. It's like night after night after mm. night after night. They're, they're playing. Uh, so uh, it's an 11-piece uh, band. Oh, and I, I guess the point I was going to say about the... Uh, uh, Leonid uh, videos on their website is that um, the group Chicago caught on to these videos and they were so blown away by the, by the performances on those videos that they actually took a couple of videos from Leonid's website, put them on the Chicago website and said, you ought to check these guys out. <laughs> these guys are amazing. Here's an idea for a concert tour. Yeah. Chicago comes back for a return tour. Lean and a friend opens for them. Yeah, you get you Chicago go. music all night. Yeah, exactly. So uh, anyway, 11-member group. Um, uh, and the, the uh, publicity says uh, it's uncanny ability to capture the spirit, musicality, and fire of the American supergroup Chicago. That's a good Good phrase. Um, they um, most of the members are from Russia, some uh, Moldova and Belarus. Uh, there were members from Ukraine. However, they have been called to duty. Uh -huh. So they are. If you're of a certain age, you're fighting the war. So um, uh, very interesting to see that. Um, while uh, they've had over seven hundred thousand uh, social media followers, uh, a half million. Uh, I'm sorry, a hundred fifty million. Uh, YouTube video views, 150 million plus. That's a lot. Wow. Uh, and uh, so they, um, uh, people are just uh, like, hey, who are these guys, you know? Uh, so um, they, um, what did I, oh, I wanted to tell you that they have also uh, broken out a little bit. So you might just hear the occasional earth, wind and fire oh. or blood, sweat and tears song okay. at the show, but it's primarily Chicago, uh, the music they do in this spot on. Uh, so we're glad to have them. Uh, the show is selling really well and uh, should be a, a fun evening. Okay. Our first show opening night, Saturday, June 17th, uh, 7.30 p.m. And uh, uh, it's just a great uh, night to come down. Uh, actually, on the subject of tickets, let me just say that uh, one of the things that's going uh, really rampant uh, now is um, when you go search for a show, if you put in Leonid and Friends or if you put in Lowell Summer Music, you never know what you're going to get. And this, while our, you know, we have the search engine optimization, all that stuff, sure. we're right where we should be. But there are ticket companies, ticket resellers who are in the paid positions sure. before you get okay. to the search engine optimized positions. And um, we have had people uh, come to the park and say, well, we got tickets and we're in row G. And we said, we don't have a row G. Yeah. <laughs> and where did you get these tickets? Oh, through such and such a, a company. And there's so many of them now, you, you know, you think there's one or two, there's like 10 or 20. Uh, and uh, so, um, and these people have in many cases paid Many times the face value of the, you know, hundreds of dollars. They are for these tickets for those fake tickets. At a time when the tickets are still available on our website at, in this case, $36. And no ticketing charge. You started no. that a couple of years ago, right? No, no. no. There is a, a ticketing charge now oh, you since, we, okay. since we went to uh, eTix, because okay. there are expenses now that we have to do for uh, eTix and the website. It's uh, the, nothing, nothing gets cheaper uh, to do. So, um, uh, by the way, if you want to buy the tickets without a ticket fee, just uh, walk into the box office at uh, Lowell Memorial Auditorium. The Lowell Memorial Auditorium box office 
is the Lowell Summer Music Series box office, and they'll be glad to sell you tickets without ticket fees. So there you go, a chance to uh, save some money there. Leonid and Friends, Saturday, Mm -hmm. June 17th. Enjoy Mm -hmm. the music of Chicago at Boarding House Park. Your Mm -hmm. other June show, Friday, June 23rd, Keb Moe. Now, we've done radio interviews for 15 years, so this name is familiar. He's, He's been here before, or they've been here before? 2005 in 2008 so 2005 he came as a it was a duo show uh absolutely blew everybody away uh because the uh his uh, guitar playing is just astounding uh and uh he's he's only built up even an even better repertoire of uh, songs over that time uh 2008 he came with a band and they rocked out um so he will have uh, a band uh, this time. Uh, he's got uh, now five Grammy Awards, uh, 14 uh, Blues Foundation Awards, uh, and I think somewhere I saw Americana Music Association's 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award. So uh, what's interesting is he's put in the blues category, and he certainly does his share of blues, but he's really a singer-songwriter. So you're not, it's, not a, it's not a blues night. It really isn't. It is a uh, a creative uh, singer songwriter doing his thing, and he, with a lot of humor, a lot of charm. Uh, he's got a great, great following uh, because of that personality he brings to his songs. So uh, he has uh, collaborated with uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt, Vince Gills, the Dixie Chicks, La Love It, Taj Mahal. Uh, Willie Nelson. So, I mean, he's he's up there with uh, uh, the big guys. He's um, uh, been on national television, televised broadcast, aside from all the evening, the, the nighttime uh, TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been um, uh, on uh, nationally televised broadcast from the Kennedy Center, the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, and Eric Clop- Clapton's Crossroads Festival, where only the best guitarists get invited. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, he... Um, um, he his uh, he's got uh, a new album out um, called Good to Be, and um, again very upbeat. Um, uh, he has a, a song that's out now called uh, The Old Me Better, and the old me better is I w- I wanted to marry you, I pursued you, you made me a better person. But now I like the old me better. <laughs> so, uh, so he's got a great sense of humor uh, that comes through in the song. So, Love it. Uh, so that's to that uh, show. that's Friday, June twenty third. So those are the only two shows we ended up with in June. Uh, we thought we were going to have five or six, and this is the way it works out. Yeah. So so tickets available for those two shows, all yep. shows, Lowell Summer Music, right? Uh, dot org. Yep. If you want to, uh, if you're in downtown Lowell, stop yep. by the Lowell Auditorium box office. Yep. Save the money on the uh, yep. the ticketing fees and whatnot. Do one more thing about tickets, though. You uh, was it just last week? You put your season pass yes we did. on sale, so you yep. can actually buy a ticket to see right. every show. Come to as many or as right. few as you'd like. Tremendous twenty five percent savings. So, yeah, twenty percent off. 20. Um, and no ticketing fee at all, which acro- across you know fourteen shows. You know what would have added up to something. So um, the um, the it, there are a certain number of people who are totally drawn to the kind of music we we present, and there's a variety of music, and they're happy with that variety. They don't want to hear, oh, you know, oh, I like this style or that style. I, they want to hear all these performers, see them live, and they're willing to make that sort of time commitment in the summer uh, to to do that. Um, the season pass gives you the best deal. It's five hundred dollars for the season pass. Gets you into fourteen shows, which the math is that's about thirty eight dollars a show. So if you can see Lyle Lovett, Andy Grammer, sure. Matt Nathan, you know any of these acts, uh, uh, Melissa Etheridge, anywhere for that kind of money, um, uh, I haven't seen it. So uh, it's a great, great deal if you're in the area and want to splurge on uh, investing in yourself, the season pass is available until our first show. So it's only available till uh, the Leonid and Friends uh, show, and then um, that's it. Do you still do uh, premium seating up front right. as well? Um, we uh, have, um, uh, over time, in fact, it came during some uh, tight years when we were 
running a deficit of 30, 40, 50,000 some years. And um, uh, our ticket company uh, person at that time said, every other venue charges extra to be in the prime seats. You need to do that. So we've said, okay, it's the ticket price plus a hundred dollar donation to the to the series, and uh, so we put that out there. Uh, let me tell you, they're pretty much all gone for the whole summer. Uh, there's a, a few available, uh, like the um, the late August shows, but pretty much they're all gone. And mostly they sell in the first uh, couple of days that a show goes on sale. So uh, so we're not looking to push. The premium seats, they're pretty much gone. All right. Well, Peter Rossella, uh, so much uh, so much entertainment in mm. one venue. We, we'll talk more about the right. July show, the August shows, the free fun for kids, which yes, takes place during the week talk about at Boarding House Park. Yep. You know what that means? You have to come back here to our studios again a couple more times so we can do this. Uh, it well, wasn't that bad, was it? No, no. Yeah, 35 minutes? Oh, wow. That's okay. not bad. Yep. No, no, no radio commercial or news yep. breaks or any of that fun no stuff? No script. No script. No, no, we no just nothing. keep talking. Yeah. All well, right. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's a it's a great lineup. It, it really is for, yeah. for those who are watching for the first time and learning of the Little yeah. Summer Music Series yeah. for the first time. Trust me, you have to at least just go to one show this year. Go to many, but at least try to make one just so you right. can hear what we were talking about. And folks, it's a very short summer. So it'll be here and be gone enjoy it while it's here yep definitely yeah june june 17th so the last musical show friday september 1st yep. and of course the banjo fiddle contest yep, the week we'll, after, we'll yep. talk more about yep. as well but yep. peter Asala, the man uh, one of the many behind the little summer music yep. series but the guy who's been there from the get-go thanks for coming on in here in the studios and thank you for Let's putting this on every single year and i i hope we're back to mm -hmm. you know growing and bigger and better than before mm -hmm. covid Thanks for your support, Teddy. Thank you. And thank all of you for joining us as well. Again, we recorded this podcast on Thursday, June 8th. Not sure when you're watching it, but whenever you are, if it's before June 17th, get on out, see Leonid and Friends, and learn more about the Lowell Summer Music Series online, lowellsummermusic.org. You'll probably get to see me there as well. I know a couple of shows the wife is already making me take her to. So until uh, <laughs> next time, everybody stay safe out there, and we'll catch you on the other side.